What is up everyone? I was looking for a small and simple project for this video. So today we're going to create a pig Latin generator, creator, translator, whatever you want to call it with vanilla, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, so I've got the code pin here that I will have a link to in the description so you can go and grab all of that. And then I also have opened VS Code uh, where I have my boilerplate files for a regular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, project. So I've got the index HTML, I've got the app JS, and I've got the app CSS. So we'll do a little bit of all of those things. And the first thing we can do is just go and update the title here to be pig Latin trans. I like translator better than uh, creator. So let's go with translator. All right, and then we'll go ahead and just kind of stub out our HTML. Now, as you can see, it's not uh, very complicated, but we do have some good stuff in here. So I'm gonna use Emmet snippets in here. So dot container uh, will generate for me a div with a class of container. Emmet snippets are super cool. I've got a link up here to a video on this channel that you can check out to teach you all about the Emmet snippets. So we'll have a container and then we'll have a header with a class of header. And inside of there, we will have an image tag where the source will be the icon PNG. And let me go and grab that and paste it in here. Otherwise, you can just go and kind of find it um, externally in the browser and use like a, a direct path to the hosted version. I've got it downloaded locally, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then the alt in here is going to be uh, the pig icon. And then the class, gonna do some styling on this, will be the header icon. All right, so there's our header and then our header icon, and then we'll have kind of the header text. This will be H1 with a class of head, header title, and then this will say the pig Latin translator. All right, so then as you can see in here, we'll need a text area to be able to enter in the text. So we'll add a text area here, and uh, this will be just um, text. I, it doesn't matter what it's called. We don't need an ID. The columns can be uh, anything. We're gonna get rid of that and kind of set the width ourselves. So then uh, the text area, we wanna have a class input, whatever. It doesn't really matter what we call that. And then we'll have the kind of the output text as well. So we'll have a P tag and this will have a class of text output and an ID. This is kind of cool of text output. So if I do that, it adds both a class and an ID in one snippet in uh, Emmet, which I think is pretty cool. So let's just uh, see what we got. Uh, it's not going to be a whole lot. Well, actually, sorry, we need to open this now with the live server extension. If you've never seen this before, you can search live server extension in VS code. And when you do that, it will open it up in a live server. I uh, got a video on that you can check out to see how how that works too. So uh, obviously, this output text is hidden. So you don't see anything. And then here's the input text, uh, the text area. So let's go ahead and add some of our base styles here just to kind of get this thing uh, looking at least closer to what we want. I'm gonna end up kind of uh, setting all the margins and things myself. So I'm gonna do uh, margin of zero and padding of zero just to kind of reset everything and then set the box sizing to border box, all right? So there's kind of our base styles. Then on the HTML, I wanna set a background color. I'm gonna give that cool uh, cool purple color. So this is 6760AA. That should be a purple color. There we go. And now we should see that showing up. All right, nice. And uh, then we want to work on this container. So this container, we want to only be uh, a certain amount of pixels wide. So we'll do uh, maybe 600 pixels wide. It doesn't need to be a big thing. And we'll center everything in it with margin zero auto. And then we'll just add some padding. So if uh, if it gets down to be a really small screen, we'll make sure we still have some padding on the outside. So what we should see is that should center everything right here. That's pretty cool. And now we can work on the header. So if you look in uh, the code pin here, you see that the um, the icon is right next to the text, uh, the pig Latin translator text, and things look a little bit differently. Uh, I think what I want to do is let's just say, let's set the font family to be a sans serif. Let's go and update that. It should look a little bit better. Cool. All right, so now let's work on this uh, header. And to be able to put two things on a horizontal row, we can use a display of flex. So display of flex. And then uh, since the default uh, direction is horizontal, we want, or by a row, we want to align these items vertically. So we can align items center. And hopefully this will put kind of the pig and the text right next to each other 
in a row and then also align vertically. And then uh, we might want to style the header icon and just say that this is gonna have a height of 100 pixels maybe. And is it, that seems to be pretty good. That looks good. So there's our pig light and translator header. We can add a little bit of kind of a, a margin, maybe top of 50 PX and then a margin bottom of 30 PX. Make sure that it has some breathing room and that looks good. And uh, then we can come and grab our input, our text area. So I think we call this a text input. And first of all, we want this to run the entire uh, width across. So we want this to be 100% want to size set resize to none. And uh, that's probably pretty good other than some padding. So we don't need to get too fancy on here. Just give it some padding and that should be good. All right, I think that is, well, we've got a couple of styles here for our text output. So let's put something in here for the output just to test. So here's a little bit of dummy code that shows up there. And we wanna have it have like a lighter uh, background color and then the text be purple. So let's go ahead and add those styles. So for this text output, we'll do a background color of RGB. And what we're doing is uh, basically just taking white and adding a little bit of transparency on it uh, so that the text kind of absorbs the purple color behind it. And then we'll set uh, the regular color to be uh, that purple color up here. So six, seven, six, zero, a, a, does that give us that purple color? There we go. Or a purple color. And then we'll have some padding. I'll get formatting on this in a second. And that should be good. So now let's look up here and we see our text is here. That's not actually working. So now we've got everything basically styled. Now we need to update our JavaScript, which this is kind of where the actual fun part comes in. So the first thing we want to do is get a reference to both the input and the output. So uh, did we add on the index HTML on the text area? We need to add an ID of text input here. So we've got our text input and then we've got our text output. I've got a little snippet in VS code, a get ID snippet, which can get an element by ID and I can just tell it uh, what I want to grab and it populates the uh, search as well as the variable name. So I'll do that twice for the text input and the text output. All right. And then now we want to check anytime the user enters something uh, into the input, we need to update the output. So uh, we will do text input and not value. I don't know where that came from. Add event listener. And this event is we're listening for is key up. And so we'll grab the actual event and then have a callback function. And this is where we want to translate to pig Latin and display new text. All right. So let's first start by just logging out. Let's grab the, the input. So uh, we'll grab the input from e.target.value. So e is the event, target is this text input element, and then value is the value of what's inside of it. So let's uh, take that input and let's set this as the text for the output. So text output dot enter text equals input. All right, so this way they should just kind of track each other. So let's try this out. If we uh, start typing in here, doesn't seem to work. So let's go back and, and do a little bit of debugging on here. Oh gosh, simple spelling mistake. Not text output, but text output. I couldn't have gotten any worse. All right, so hopefully now we'll see that this is updating as we type in the box. It's actually showing the stuff down there. That's cool. So what we want to do now is update this logic to uh, show the actual Pig Latin translation. So let's look at uh, Pig Latin in Wikipedia maybe. And just to kind of show you what Pig Latin is or what the rules are, they're relatively simple. Uh, what happens is if you have a word that starts in a consonant, you basically take the, the starting consonants and put them, move them from the beginning of the word to the end and then add a Y on the end. So pig becomes ig pay. If you have multiple consonants at the beginning, like smile, you take all of the leading consonants to the end and then add a again. So smile becomes I'll smay, string becomes ing stray. And then if you start with a vowel, you simply just add a Y to the end. All right, so uh, some hopefully relatively simple rules, but this logic does get a little bit tricky. So the easiest thing that we can do is we can check if it starts with a vowel, 
then we'll just add the ending and return it. So the way we're gonna check if it's a vowel is we're gonna create an array of vowels. All right, so there's our vowels array, and then I'm just gonna create a, a variable for our ending. So this is gonna be ending equals, and this is a y. So let's check first, or let's actually write a couple of to-dos here. Uh, check if it ends in a vowel, then just add the ending, all right? All right, and we can check to see if it starts in a, a vowel by looking at the first letter and then just seeing if that letter appears in the vowels array. So if vowels dot includes, so it's an array, so we call it includes, if vowels dot includes, and then we take the first le letter of the input, so input, and we can kind of just treat this as an array. If that's the case, then we will just add the ending. So let's go ahead and start up here with actually a let. So let's say uh, output equals, and let's just start this as an empty string. And then in here, we'll say output equals input plus ending. So if it starts in that vowel, we'll just add the ending at the end. And then at the end out here, let's just update the inner text of the output to be the actual output. So let's uh, check this. If we start with a word that is uh, a T now we see we get a T and then we just add a Y. If we look at I it's I a, now we just add the a Y. If we type in something that starts with a consonant, notice nothing is happening. So here's where a little bit of the tricky part is now. Um, now we know if we do an else, now we know this thing is starting with a consonant. Now we need to figure out how many consonants there are. So we need to start at the beginning of the word iterate through it until we find a vowel and then uh, grab all of the consonants along the way. This might be might sound a little bit tricky to you, but we can use uh, a for loop here. So for let i equals, uh, looks like we got some IntelliSense here. So for uh, basically what we're doing here is trying to iterate through each character, i less than, and then we'll do the i plus plus. So we'll iterate through each character of the input. And then uh, we'll take that and we'll basically add it to our uh, string of the consonants at the beginning of the word. So what I mean is if the word starts with SM or if it's smile, we're iterating through, we wanna grab every single consonant. So let's start with uh, cons or let consonants equals an empty string, all right? And then we'll add this, uh, the current character that we're at to that consonant. So we'll say input of I, and we'll say consonants plus equals that input. So we'll take whatever character we're currently at and add it to the consonants, but we only want this to happen if that character is not a vowel. So we checked up here, if it was a vowel, we can kind of copy this check. All right, so let's take this, let's put it down here. Let's say if the vowels does not include the input at I, then we wanna add it to the consonants. So this will work, this is okay, except, did I spell I spelled those wrong? So I think that should be consonants, all right? So this will work, except it's a little bit, uh, we can optimize it a little bit. So right now we're going through every single character regardless of whether or not we hit a vowel. But after we hit a vowel, we're done looking at the word, we don't need to do anything else. So what we can do is we can actually say if it is a vowel, so if it does include, we'll go ahead and break out of this for loop. So we'll iterate through, we'll look at the first character. Is this thing a consonant? If it is, we won't break. We'll add that thing to our consonants array. If it's, uh, and then we'll go to the next one. And then we look at that. If that is a vowel, then we'll just break out of this loop and we'll be done and we'll know all of our consonants here. All right, so we'll have consonants. And uh, what we'll do is we will add those consonants to the end of our word. So we'll take the in, or we'll say output equals input plus consonants, so we'll take those consonants, and then the ending in here. And uh, now let's actually look at what this looks like. So if we type in that, uh, we get that they, and this is not quite right. So we want to remove those first leading consonants. So it should be at they, so we wanna remove those first leading consonants. So the way we can do this, this might look a little bit interesting, is we can take the substring, so input.substring, and then we can start at consonants.length. So what we're doing here is we're taking the length of consonants, so however many characters are in there, and then we're starting at, uh, with the input, we're starting at that number. So if there's two consonants, we're starting at number three, basically character and input, and we're taking the rest of that, if that makes sense. 
So what this should do now is if we type in that, now we get the at they and everything is moved accordingly. So uh, at they, and now when we start to do different words, we're seeing that this is uh, not quite exactly what we're looking for because it's treating this thing as one whole string. We actually wanna do this word by word. So what we can do is we can uh, take our input and we can split the input based on spaces to grab an array of words. So let's look how we do that. So we'll take uh, words and we'll say, uh, this will be input dot split. And then we'll split this on a space. So what that does is it creates an array of every word basically in our sentence, in our text area. And then we want to translate each word in there. So each word in words, we want to translate to pig Latin. So we can do this by saying const, or we can actually, sorry, we don't even have to create a variable, const.map. And then for each word, what do we do? Well, what we want to do is take that word and then translate it to Pig Latin. So let's actually grab this code and let's create a helper function. So const uh, convert to Pig Latin and we'll paste this code in here. So this should do the same type of thing where it takes the input it looks for uh, the values in here. And then at the end, instead of setting this to the text output text, what we're gonna do is put that up there and then we'll just return the output. So we've got one function that will take in a word and it will translate that to pig Latin. And then what we're doing is we're taking all the words of the input and for each one of them, we then translate by calling convert to pig Latin and pass in that word, all right? And we can assign this to const output equals and get rid of this one up here. And this looks right, except what map does is it returns an array to us. So we wanna take that array of pig Latin translated words and we want to put them all together back into a sentence separated by spaces. And you can do that with the join function here and adding a space. So this is gonna say, take every item in the array join them all together into a string and then separate each one by a space. So let's see if this works now. So we've got our helper function here. We call it for each word and we'll see if this comes out right. So, uh, hi, my name is James. So I, Hey, that looks right. Um, my a, cause it starts with a, cause it starts with a concept. This is an interesting one where my doesn't actually have a vowel in it. So it does take the entire word and just add the A to the N. And then a uh, name becomes aim nay, I say aims J. So if anybody's really good at speaking pig Latin out there, let me know. But I think this is some pretty cool JavaScript logic where we're able to take input, we're able to split that input in a text area into an array of words. And then for each one of those words, we map over them and convert it to pig Latin and then join that array back together with this join function to then output this text uh, in the output there. Now the convert to pig Latin, this logic is interesting as well because we have to do uh, some checking to compare to see if things are, are vowels or not. And then we also have to do some iterations. We have to uh, accumulate consonants. So this is an accumulator pattern where we're building up this consonant string. There's also the short circuit pattern here where we break out of this for loop early if we uh, can. It saves us some time and resources on the computer. This is not really important with strings as small, but if you had a really, really big string, this would be super helpful. Makes things a little bit faster. So we've uh, done some optimizations, honestly, in here with our text to make it a little bit faster. And I think we built a pretty cool uh, basic JavaScript application in a pig Latin translator. So let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the video. If you did, Make sure to go ahead and like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so that you can get updates when new videos come out. And then also let me know in the comments if there's any cool little quirky JavaScript applications like this that you would like to see built on this channel or you would like to learn how to build. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.